Go. Welcome to Warren by the Bay TV. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bachara. We are back in studio. I know we've done a couple of different episodes the last couple, um, but this one's going to be pretty straightforward. i got a couple of wines, one white, one red, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And of course, uh, sponsored by Goosehead Insurance and uh, Wine by the Bay TV. I finally have, I know I've been promising for a while, I finally figured out um, how to time my t-shirt. So you can see the brand new, I drink it, but I wouldn't buy it, 92 point, Wine by the Bay TV t-shirt. Um, they are available. Uh, I'll be sending some out to a few people. Um, there might be a contest. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go, but I did want to wear it because I've been talking about it for the longest time. You've been seeing some pictures, but I haven't actually worn it. So maiden voyage of the uh, I drink it, but I wouldn't buy a t-shirt. Okay, so we have a couple of great wines today, but before I get into them, I did want to mention uh, that the uh, subscriber drive is over, so we are going to donate um, to an animal charity. I'm not really sure which one yet. I feel like it's the uh, International um, ASPCA, uh, but I'm not really sure. I'm going to do a little research. Uh, we have five total subscribers, so I'm going to donate $100, and once I make that donation, I will show you the proof so you know that I'm not just talking, that this actually was going to happen, and it actually did happen. So uh, that's business number one. Uh, number two, uh, don't forget to leave a uh, thumbs up and like these videos. Um, I know we get a few people that do always like them, but uh, the more the merrier. Uh, the more you like the video, the more uh, subscribers we get and the more we get, uh, get to get out there in YouTube land. So people other than just the folks that are watching right now might get a chance to see it. So don't forget underneath the, uh, underneath the screen below you, there's a little thumbs up button. Just press it and uh, let's get to work. Okay, so to the wines. So like I said, we've gone back to our two classic white and red. Uh, we have the Dry Creek Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, this is uh, 2021. And then we have the Black Tears Malbec. Uh, this is from uh, um, Argentina, rather. And this is a wine that I actually tasted the 2012 version, I believe, uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, we had it on the list at Morton's uh, by the Glass, I think. If it wasn't by the Glass, then it was... I mean, it was, it's always by the bottle when it's by the glass, but I think it was by the glass too. But anyway, it was a very good bottle. I think it was a 2012 vintage. Uh, so I haven't tasted the 17. I saw this one at Costco, so I thought I'd uh, give it a shot and it would inspire me a little bit. Um, but as always, we're going to start with the white wine. So we have the Dry Creek Vineyards. 2021 Sauvignon Blanc from Sonoma County. Okay, so the um, label might look familiar. If you remember one of the uh, Coach Pardee episodes, um, I had the Dry Creek uh, Fumé Blanc. Um, and as we talked about earlier, the Fumé Blanc um, is the Sauvignon Blanc grape uh, aged in oak barrels. Um, so that gives it, that changes it from Sauvignon Blanc to Fumé Blanc. Okay, so um, this is a straight Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, it, it does have a little bit of oak aging to it. I think it's 89% in steel and the rest is in oak. Um, so that, that makes it a Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's a 2021. Now, there's no rating on the 2021. It's too early. Uh, but the 2020 uh, actually got 92 points wine enthusiast. 14.1 alcohol by volume. I don't know why I held that back up again. Um, and as I said, Dry Creek County, I'm uh, sorry, Dry Creek is a uh, growing region in Sonoma, northwest of Healdsburg. Okay. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, Dry Creek, as we know, is a pretty good producer. Especially the white wines. So I'm expecting a classic Sauvignon Blanc experience here. All right, let's see what we got. I got actually just passing it. I got a whiff of peach like right away. So let's open this thing up. As always, they, the wines have been open um, two hours ish. Uh, they're a little bit obviously the white wines will be a little bit warmer than you might want to serve it to someone. But that's so that we can uh, get the get all the flavors uh, from the wine. We don't kind of mute the experience because it's too cold. So, yep, very perfumey. It actually has more legs than I was expecting. 
it's a very light color, very light golden color, almost as like a straw. Um, yeah, uh, maybe some mango on the nose. Yeah, very tropical kind of feel. A little hint of pineapple, mango, um, maybe some papaya, like maybe like a papaya pastry almost. So really that kind of sweet. Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much what you'd expect. I'm gonna give it a shot here. Let's let's see what we got. That's definitely a Sauvignon Blanc. I mean, no joke. Uh, again, tropical flavors. Uh, I believe the alcohol was 14.1, uh, and it tastes like it. I mean, there's a lot of alcohol initially. It's a very hot wine. Um, I feel it in my mouth, in, in the middle of the tongue, and all the way back into my throat, and now kind of down here. So I feel like the alcohol is a lot of balance, to be honest with you, which might kind of be because of the temperature. Um, and this is much warmer than you would normally drink it. Uh, it's just cooler than room temperature, so it's probably 60 degrees, which is kind of warm. Um, but even still, the, the alcohol is, is considerable. It's a considerable part. It's a little creaminess, um, almost like a cream peach kind of thing, like peaches and cream. Um, I don't taste much pineapple. Maybe some of that mango again, or like mangoes and cream. You know, have you ever had like a like a cake? That's like a fruit cake, and they put like um, peaches and some like some whipped cream or whatever that kind of thing. A little bit of cake. Again, I'm not tasting the cake, but I'm tasting that whipped cream and, and peaches layer. That's definitely happening. Uh, or mango, either or. I, I'd say more mango because it's not as tangy as a peach might be. The alcohol has receded a little bit on the second tasting, which makes it a lot better. And now I'm definitely tasting the peach, uh, the mango, maybe a little papaya, a hint of cream. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, it's, it's definitely got a lot more weight. Here comes the alcohol again. So the alcohol is there. Um, again, not as pronounced as the first tasting, but definitely it's present and you're going to notice it. As it gets, if you drink this colder, you'll notice it maybe a little bit less, um, but you also lose some of that creaminess. Um, I think it's a good Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's a little bit more uh, aggressive, but there's a lot of there's a lot of finish to it. I'm actually still tasting it, um, so that's got to be about 40, 50 seconds at least, and it's still going. So I believe they gave it 92 points in 2020. I think. Maybe next year it might be 92 points. Right now, I'd say it's uh, 90 and a half, 91 points. 91. It tastes like a Sauvignon Blanc. Excuse me. But uh, it's it, the, the alcohol is a little bit stronger than you might expect. So um, I'd like to taste this again when it's cold and maybe give you an update. Um, I think that the, that the alcohol will go away as maybe it hits that 55 degree mark. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's a good wine. 91 points. Yeah, pretty reasonable. Okay. So that's our dry Creek. Put that off camera there. A little bit of water. Okay. So this one is the Black Tears Vintners Tapas. And it's from Argentina, from Mendoza. Oh, by the way, uh, the Dry Creek, I meant to tell you, is $12.99 at Costco. And this one is $39.99 at Costco. Okay, so I got them both at Costco. 
this this wine, like I said, I've tasted before in a different vintage. It's a really good wine. Um, Mendoza in Argentina, Yuco Valley is a very prominent uh, wine growing region in Argentina. Argentina has been coming on the last well more than ten years, but uh, they they it, Chile and Argentina have been kind of battling it out in South America for for dominance in terms of uh, quality of wine. And Argentina specializes in Malbec. This one happens to be 100% Malbec. Uh, let me put this up closer so you can get a better look at the label. Get a better look at the label. Um, yeah, 100% Malbec, 14.5 alcohol by volume. So very close to the Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is the 14.1, so that's probably why I felt like it was a little aggressive on the alcohol. Because really, 14.1 for a white wine, even a Chardonnay, uh, is a little bit, it's a little bit much. Um, and as you see, 14.5 for a red, um, that's more in line for what you're expecting. Um, so back to Mendoza. So Mendoza, uh, the, the Uco Valley, um, this wine is grown in the uh, growing region called San Pablo. It sits at about 4,300 miles elevation, uh, 4,300 feet elevation, excuse me. Gets a lot of sunlight. Um, it's east of the Andes Mountains and then the snow melt from the peaks of the Andes kind of runs down and nourishes the, the, the soil. So there's very rich soil. There's a lot of nutrients in the soil. And then this, this grape is grown in the valley and it gets all kinds of, uh, all kinds of benefits from that runoff. Okay. So this one is a 2017, 96 points, Jane Suckling, 93 points, wine and spirits. So it's got a lot to live up to. Um, I'm kind of curious. I seem to remember this being a very delicious wine, uh, something that's very approachable, um, the 2012 version anyway. And right away, this is pretty dark. So, I want to mess up the wine ash trophy. All right, let's give it a little. By the way, I still kind of taste that Sauvignon Blanc, even though I had some water. So I'm gonna have a little more water. So that good finish is definitely a plus. I mean, I'm glad I gave it uh, 91. I think it deserves it. Yeah, this is definitely. Yeah, nice red. Okay, let's look at the color. So it's a dark red. I wouldn't say blue black. It's it's definitely that red violet color. But definitely dark. I mean, I can't see any of the ink writing through here. Um, so yeah, that's that's really good. Um, it has a little bit of dissipation towards the edge, but it's not watery. Um, so it's a very nice wine. The uh, the legs are really good. I mean, they're present, but they're not syrupy. They're just kind of there. Um, I'd say they're about I don't know a centimeter wide. So that's really good. I think that's uh, I think that's kind of where you want to be. Again, this is uh, this hundred percent Malbec, and it's been eighteen months in New French oak. Mm. I mean, it has a little funk to it, but it also has like a like a cooked plum kind of thing. A little bit of maybe burn match, like the sulfur thing, just a hint. And just a little bit of pepper, not black pepper, probably more like a white pepper kind of thing. Um, it's it's interesting. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what this tastes like. I want to make sure I get that something I want out of my mouth. Okay. It's a lot more juicy than I was expecting. 18 months in the French oak, I thought would give it more of a toasted kind of thing. Maybe a cocoa or a dark chocolate. Um, I'm not getting that initially. I'm getting a lot of fruit. Um, black plum, black cherry. Um, 
but not tart. Very, uh, almost like they're dried. More of a dried cherry and a dried plum. Um, yeah. There's a lot of tannin. I mean, it's not uncomfortable, but it's definitely drying my mouth, making me pucker. Um, again, more of that uh, black cherry, uh, dried cherries, maybe. Um, definitely dried dark fruit, um, maybe some currant. Uh, but it's not as deep as the color might have suggested, which is kind of weird. I thought maybe there'd be a little bit more depth to it, a little bit more body. I mean, it's a 17, so that's five years. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lighter experience. It's kind of like the difference between a Sonoma cab and a, uh, and a Napa Valley cab. Um, it's, it's on that Sonoma style, uh, much lighter, um, more kind of freewheeling. Uh, the alcohol is, is there, but it's very, very slight. Excuse me. I taste it, but it's kind of in the background. Like with the Dry Creek, it was more in the foreground. In the uh, Black Tears, it's definitely in the uh, in the rear there, kind of just underneath the surface, uh, making sure that it doesn't get flabby. And there's, there's no chance this will get flabby. This isn't thick and syrupy. It doesn't really coat your palate. It's not very heavy. It doesn't have a whole lot of body. I'd say this is not light but medium shine towards the light, like solidly medium and then kind of tipping a little bit to the lighter side of medium. Um, so it's a nice wine. Uh, 96 points is way too much. I would say 93 is too much. I'd say this is a pleasant wine, um, drinkable wine, 91 points night at $40. We've tasted better on this channel for $40. So, um, to my taste, this was okay. Uh, it's it's sold and it, and it talked itself better than it actually was. Um, so I'm kind of disappointed because I kind of had high hopes. I remember, like I said, the 2012 Black Tears, I think it was a 12 uh, or maybe an 11 now that I'm thinking about it. Either way, the one that I had tasted prior had a lot more depth of flavor. Um, it was it had more body to it. Not It wasn't heavy, but it definitely had more of a coating kind of thing. Now the flavor has gone away. So isn't that sad? Okay, so your Sauvignon Blanc has a longer finish than your Malbec. What is the world coming to, ladies and gentlemen? What is it coming to? All right, so uh, like I said, uh, now that I think about it some more, I think that Black Tears is getting 90 points. So 90 points for the Black Tears, 91 for the Dry Creek. Uh, I'd say the Dry Creek is a, is a much better buy at $12.99 than this Black Tears at $40. Um, I'm really sorry. I really wanted to like this wine. Um, I don't dislike it. I just don't like it for the price. If this was a $22, $23 bottle of wine, it'd be a lot more forgiving. But at $40, you can do better. I'm sorry you can. Um, you can do better from Argentina, too. So that Black Tears um, is a little disappointing. Still drinkable. But at $40, I think you have better options. Okay, so I think that's it for today. As always, I'm George. This is Wine by the Bay TV, and we'll see you again next time.